So if you want to deliver value to your customers fast and you want to do it with minimal risk, you need DevOps. Over the next 10 minutes, we're going to take a look at four things. A bit of the background to the DevOps movement, a successful Atlassian case study on the implementation of DevOps, how Greenhopper and Kanban can support a DevOps team, and finally, some lessons that we learned over the past eight months that you can take back to your own teams to help kickstart a DevOps culture. DevOps really, as, as a movement, began two years ago. A gentleman by the name of Patrick Dubois held a conference called DevOps Days in Northern Europe. DevOps Days was all about overcoming this us versus them mentality that's common in so many software development companies. We have the operations on the one side and the developers on the other. Um, you might be familiar with a fairly common scenario. The developers will package up an application, they'll hand it off to the operations team, the operation team throws it out to production, doesn't throw it out to production, but pushes it out to production, and they get bugs, error reports from the users. When they return to the developers and they say, hey, this is what we've got, the developers say, well, it works on my machine. Fairly common, there's a few laughs there. So it's not unusual that we see this, right? The operations team, they want stability. They don't want change, they want uptime. Developers, on the other hand, they're all about change. We want to move fast and get new functionality out to our customers. So when we look at these two different teams, what we're trying to do with DevOps is bring them together and find a happy medium between both extremes and get both teams focused on delivering value to the customer. A recent DevOps survey actually discovered a few other benefits from DevOps cited by the respondents. DevOps teams cite that the mean time to resolution of defects actually lowers over time. They have more frequent and smoother software updates due in large part to increased automation of the deployment process. And finally, they're matching agile development with agile delivery. So about eight months ago now, the Jira bug fix team actually made a transition to DevOps, at the same time they introduced Kanban. Historically, they were Scrum, they were doing sprints, and it really wasn't working. Estimating bugs was difficult. It didn't give any additional predictability into the delivery date. Um, from a deployment perspective, there was a lot of manual, you know, we had to nurture this build right through the process, and it was about a three-day, three man days to get it right through the process and out to the customer. So it was very labor intensive. So the Jira bug fix team, what we wanted to do was minimize um, all of the human intervention in this, automate our continuous deployment and getting it out to our rush boxes and our QA servers as quickly as possible, bring the developers and the operations team together. So there was actually a build engineer that was assigned to Jira bug fix full time to help make all this happen. And we also used Kanban because Kanban enabled us to limit the amount of work that we had in progress and focus on the flow. The reason we wanted to limit the amount of work in progress was so that we could say, okay, there's three bugs in progress that we've got to finish up, or maybe one or two. We want to be able to release at the drop of a hat. So if we say we want to release today and get the value that we've done, the bugs that we've already fixed but aren't yet delivered to customers, we want to get it out there, we can do that and do that release very quickly. If we had a lot of work in progress, then we'd have to finish up a whole lot of bugs, code reviews, that sort of stuff. So when we look at how Greenhopper supported uh, the Jira bug fix team, first and foremost, we redefined done. Traditionally, the definition of done had been code checked in, unit tests passing, and the PO had approved it. The definition of done, and as you'll see here, we actually have uh, an additional fifth column to deploy. The definition of done include the operations team getting that value into our customers' hands. So it was when the standalone installation was available on Atlassian.com, that's when we were finally done, right? So we're mapping an extended value stream. Uh, incidentally, this is actually the rapid board. The rapid board is in labs today. We hope that over the coming months, this will develop and evolve into what will be the answer to um, our most common feature request which is support for multiple Jira projects in Greenhopper. Um, this board's actually built using JQL, and you can do a JQL filter like project equals A or project equals B. 
The, uh, the swim lane there, expedite, it actually has JQL as well. That's priority equals blocker. Um, anyway, um, if you want to find out more about the rapid board, it's available in 565 in labs. Um, we're eagerly soliciting feedback from Kanban teams. To move on, though, with the Jira bug fix team, the other aspect, and I touched on it briefly, was visualizing the flow. What we wanted to do, and this is a cumulative flow diagram, and what we do with our cumulative flow diagram is we look first at the orange, which is the issues to do, and on the other side we've got that purple red there, which is the done. And what we're trying to do is minimize the amount of time that work spends in between, and we want to minimize, as I said, the amount of work that builds up in any particular column. So you can see that towards the right there above May 21, we've got a spike in the green, and that means that there's a lot of work that's building up there. Um, why, why do we want to have all this work building up? We don't. So we use this, we have about six wallboards, Jira wallboards that are around our office, and at a glance we can see when there's a growth in one of these columns and there's too many issues, and we can address that immediately. We'll say, guys, stop working on that issue, don't pick that bug up, get back, finish off the code review so that we can get that one issue done as soon as possible. Another chart that we're actually using for the Jira bug fix team is a control chart. A control chart helps us measure cycle time, cycle time being the amount of time that an issue is in progress. Um, if you can actually see here, it's a scatter plot, and we have a number of little orange dots. Each of those orange dots represent the day that an issue was completed. Our green bar across here is actually the mean time. So of all of these issues, it took about five days on average to get them through from to do to done. And we have a standard deviation there to show us with a fair degree of accuracy how long it's going to take to get something done. So if a product owner says, I've got a, a, a bug, I want to get it fixed, how long is it going to take to get it fixed? Well, we can say, it's probably going to take around five days. Worst case scenario, we're probably looking at about 10 days on the outside. This gives us actual predictability into delivery so that we can better plan when we're releasing that software out to customers. And obviously, do we bring one more bug in and try and aim for a Thursday, or do we cut it now and, and just try and get it out as soon as possible? When it comes to things that we learned uh, from our journey to uh, introduce DevOps in the Jira bug fix team, first and foremost, it's a human problem. And the best way to address it, we found, was to get out of our seat, use our two feet, and go and talk with someone in the other team. So the developers were having tons of interactions with the operations guys. They were learning what the operations guys and girls do day in, day out to get our software out to production. Um, on the other hand, the operations are sitting with developers to learn about what's happening in their world. And together, because they now had a shared definition of done, it was really important that they were on the same page. We went further than that, though. We actually introduced collective code ownership. Now, we'd always had this at Atlassian. Anyone at Atlassian could check in. But over the past 12 months, it's really improved a lot to the point where people from other teams will now uh, check out the code, make changes, make a bug fix, perhaps, someone from the operations team, and check that back in with a code review. So a developer could look over that and either accept it, change it, reject it, but it could fix up a problem that the operations team were having. Uh, indeed, you saw earlier this morning uh, Andrew Rowlings' talk. He talked about uh, the support team, and they'd committed back to Jira as well. So that's been really successful. Finally, if you can show the developers how the software is deployed and they can help automate that process in some, some form, it's great to have that stored in the, in the source code management tool. So one of the problems, you know, we talked about this, well, it works on my machine. Well, the best way to overcome that is give the developers the scripts to bring up a production-like environment on their own virtual machine. Um, so they don't have to touch any of the production infrastructure, but it replicates the same versions of software, libraries, whatever it may be, and they can test that on their own as an aside. Um, developers need to know what's happening in production. So if you can give them access to logs from... Uh, Splunk or Google Analytics, New Relic, Nagios, whatever it is, if you can make that data available to the developers and visualize it for them, that'll be really useful for when they're actually building, fixing bugs, and it'll help them think about what they're doing. Finally, know what's on the horizon for the operations team. They need to be involved in the sprint planning, uh, apologize, the demos, the planning sessions, and the retrospectives. 
So just to wrap up, I wanted to say that DevOps is all about developers and operations working together. We're still learning in the Jira bug fix team. We're always changing and adapting. And once you've taken that first step to kickstart a DevOps culture, you need to make sure that you keep looking back at what you're doing and learning and adapting as well. Thank you. Thank you.